What's good, y'all? My name is Dylan Green, and this is Real Notes, a space dedicated to blurring the cultural and artistic lines between rap and film. I'm here to chop it up with everyone from rappers and producers to journalists and video directors about their relationship to movies and how, if at all, film inspires their craft. My guest this week is North Carolina-based rapper, producer, and head of the I'll Never Die Collective, June. We spoke about Loki season two, the highs and lows of the MCU, Friday, Hitch, Soul Food, Lucy, M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable, Split, and Glass, Andre 3000's Ambient album, the impact of Earl Sweatshirt's Some Rap Songs, the history of IND, June's viral remixes and sample flips, and the creative process behind their latest project, What a Life. Come fuck with us. What's cracking, everybody? Um, welcome back to Real Notes. Welcome back to the Welcome back to the Real Corner. The 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 real is back and it never left. I I don't know. I I, I don't know why I'm thinking about J Cole right now. I never think about <laughs> J Cole. My name my my name is Dylan Green. Cinema Sai. Got a lot of names. Do a lot of shit. Outside, inside, all sides. Um, slowing down. Holidays are coming up. Um, I'm gonna be Christmas shopping two weeks late, and mm. that sucks. But we out here. Um, and I'm here with somebody who is uh. An incredible mover and shaker in their own right. <laughs> it's been it's been uh it's been really incredible um watching this person just like move and just like the things they've been able to make happen on an individual and a collective level have been really inspiring for me uh, over the last <laughs> excuse me a few years. Um, but in particular this year, it, it's been a crazy push. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, this person this person's a producer, a rapper. Um, uh, head of uh, head of IND, you know, um, pushing 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 all sorts of pushing all sorts of positivity, like Thug said, you know, <laughs> um, you know, their album, <laughs> their album, their album, their album, what a life is out. Uh, well, but, well, by the time y'all hear this, it'll already be out. But from the but you know, broadcasting from the past, it'll be out tomorrow. But we got June in the house today. Um, Flip Master Supreme. June, this has been a this has been a long time coming. I'm sorry it took so long to get you on here, <laughs> nah, bro. but yo, like I, 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 I don't even know what else to say. Just thank you for being here. I know you're busy. I know there's a lot going on in your life at the moment, and I appreciate you taking the time to come chop it up on some bullshit. Thank you. <laughs> nah, bro, the pleasure's all mine, bro. We thugging, we thugging it right now, bro. Like it's been like I've definitely been you know wanting to talk some talk some shit with you, bro. So I definitely appreciate you bringing me onto this platform, and yeah, bro. What a life drop tonight. Well, we in the past right now, so we dropping. You know, by the time y'all hear this, is already gonna be out. So make yeah. sure y'all have run that by now. Yeah, but, please. You know, we definitely got some hitters on that piece, you know for sure. And it's been and a long yeah. time coming. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I'm. I'm. I'm just. I'm just real happy that you're ending the year off strong. And there's a. There's a lot to. There's a lot to touch base on here. But before yeah. we get to all of that, before we get to all of that, I want to ask you the first question I ask everybody who comes on here, which is, uh, what's the last movie or TV show you watched that you had a strong opinion about? Uh, well, the last for real, for real show you know I was um I've been tapped into was Loki season two. That's mainly, you know, what I've really been watching, you know, as far as like TV and shit like that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I talked about this for a bit on, you know, X Twitter or whatever the fuck that nigga is trying to call it now. Um, but, you know, it, you know, the last scene, spoilers. I mean, if you haven't watched the shit by now, then I don't know why you listen to this. But, I mean, at the end, you know, where, you know, Loki finally, you know, decides, you know, like going through every fucking thing that, you know, has every fucking possible, you know, thing that, you know, to try to solve shit his way, to try to solve, you know, what the fuck was going on with this whole, you know, thing within the season. And it's just like, you know, repeatedly, repeatedly, and repeatedly, you know, he had to learn like, well, maybe, maybe I do have to sacrifice a bit. You feel me? And, yeah. you know, he had to, you know, settle upon you know being in his, being you know in a role that enacts upon his greatest fear which is being alone and it takes a whole lot you know 
to finally come to that point. And where that is, you know, for me in my current situation, I've just been trying to do shit my own way. You know, it has worked in some capacity, but, you know, in the long run, you know, spiritually, you know, mentally, you know, it's been keeping me stagnant. And, like, I have to realize, like, I have to, you know, push past, you know, working certain jobs or push past, you know, going the extra mile, you know, in a way that makes me uncomfortable. Loki was uncomfortable doing that shit. You see that he's clearly uncomfortable doing that shit. I have to make myself uncomfortable again in order to real in order to you know get into the mode to where I can finally get a break with this shit, you know. Trying to, you know, stay doing the security shit and you know, as far as music, you know, with the whole little style that I develop, you know, I know I had to be more versatile, you know, and try to, you know. Like, I'm learning every day, bro. I've been tapped in into Conductor Williams, you know, beat breakdowns, you know, getting my mm-hmm. spirituality back as far as with these beats. And, you know, I just want, you know, people, you know, to hear my shit, you know. And, like, I can definitely apply that to the raps as well. Like, Loki, man, like, Loki, that, like, that season was phenomenal, like, in my opinion. Like, I know the MCU, you know, I'm a I'm a MCU ride or die type of nigga, you know. I watch every movie, yeah, every show. I feel you. You know, I stay tapped in. You know, we had some, you know, pitfalls. You had some mid, and you know, like, and like, I can see, you know, the good side and everything. So, you know, like, I'm just more about, you know, them developing the story, developing the characters and shit like that. You know, as far as you know, like my critiques on, you know, the individual, you know films or movies or you know as like you know themselves like i do have my feelings about you know some and shit like that but overall you know i rock with what they doing i rock with where they going you know a whole lot of shit is changing you know due to you know certain people so we'll see how you know they handle you know everything ready with the uh what if season two shit and then um echo dropping like we will we'll see yeah, I, I, yeah, I feel it. Like, I, uh, you know, it's crazy. I still haven't watched Loki season two, but I loved season one, and I'm oh, all damn. like, I'm, no, 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 you're good, you're good. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that to make you feel bad. I'm, I'm like, I just haven't gotten around to it, and I will. I had a feeling that's kind of what the, I had a feeling that's the angle they were going for because that's more or less what like season one ended on. Like, I saw all of season one, so I have, you see, yeah. like, I have like a. I have like a um a frame of reference and it's fine you know like it, it's it's uh you know like Loki Loki is somebody who's always needed like like, you know, like from from the beginning from the jump of the MCU he's somebody who's needed humility just beaten into him yeah. he had it literally beaten into him by the Hulk when they first met and yeah. then you know like it it's a, it, it like like, it, like there's always a moment in every single Loki appearance where he's just like or he just has to just walk up on the fact that like I'm a god, but like I'm yeah. terrified of the world. I'm terrified of being alone. And you know, some people just need to have that beaten into them on yes. some on some on some like Tom Cruise Edge of Tomorrow type shit, <laughs> which is which is which is funny to me. Yeah, but it def- yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. It definitely. Um, no, that's cool. Well, I ain't, well I ain't say too much. I just you know basically just uh you know basically just gave up what he ultimately does but you know he um i pretty much you know you heard um pretty much um what they think you know how he's going like you'll once you'll start watching it you'll start to see um the the whole season was you know phenomenal um old dude in the courts did you know a good job in it you know yeah so uh it's definitely it's definitely you know a refreshing people say that you know like it's a refreshing end to loki's story but i don't believe that is i don't believe it's the end for say you know like there's definitely gonna come a time you know where you know later on you know they gonna you know have to double back again and bring him back in you know they can't just end it off like that that's all i'm gonna say as far as that it's never it's never really the end with any of these characters that's one of the things that everybody loves and hates about the books is that you know somebody could die and then just come back 
off some bullshit, you know, like they're mm-hmm. already, they, they were already talking about doing that when bringing Iron Man back and bringing all the original Avengers back. But I think they walked the Iron Man thing back at least, which I'm happy about. I don't I, mm-hmm. you know, like they got to they, they, they got to save that for when they really, really need it. And, and mm-hmm. like you said, um, the MCU's definitely been going through it the last I, I really want to say the last like four or five years. Not everything's you know, like their batting average is definitely starting to starting to dip a bit. And that's fine. You know, like nothing, mm-hmm. nothing can really nothing can really maintain the level of quality that so much of that early stuff did. I want to say yeah. the last one of these I like really like, like I loved Guardians 3. That was the last one I saw and like really connected yeah, with like I, Yeah, no, that shit was, was crazy. I wanted I wanted to love Thor Love and Thunder so much, but oh, like the more the, the more I thought about it, the less I like it. it it's, it it's not uh, bad, it's just like it was a fun <laughs> movie, but it was just too corny at the same time. Like <laughs> in my opinion, like they they um they they um wasted gore with that one. Oh, totally. Yeah. They wasted I, gore I was... with that one, and then to like, like, and then the fucking post credit scene with Zeus bringing in uh Hercules was low key anticlimactic for me. Like, I'm not yeah. as hyped for him to be in the like. It's cool that you know they bringing him in. Like, it's cool. You know, I I like I'm excited for you know more characters to be in the bitch. Like I ready for them, you know, to put in certain people, you know, whatever, yeah, whenever yeah, they yeah. do that. But you know, as far as you know that, bro, like it, like we can see what I like me and me and my wife, you know, we definitely saw, you know, where people was coming from with that at the end. Like it was just, you know, like so much shit could have been done with that, you know. But yeah. I see, but um, I now I guess they wanted to push, you know, the Jane Foster shit. Like I wish I rocked with for sure, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nah, I feel it. It was. It was. It, it. It was. It was definitely a disappointment compared to Ragnarok, which to me is yeah, still Ragnarok, one of the best. Yeah. One of the best MCU things they ever made. And I mean, this is gonna sound. It's gonna sound like some hater shit, but I almost like at this point in my life, I'm over. I'm over like the thuddingly obvious like classic rock needle drop music cues like i know that was a big thing in ragnarok it's a big thing in love and thunder and that's a big like taika watiti thing like that's you know like that's 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 just like a part of his whole thing but i don't know just like in general yeah just like in general i just like the whole he's like it can't be constant it can't be constant like i see where yeah it's it's crazy because i was just Oh, I was just watching. I was just watching something recently that had a, uh, like, I was watching something that had a. Um, they the, they played a uh, Biggie's. Um, why am I forgetting the name of the goddamn song? Um, Hypnotize. Here we go. So mm-hmm. like they just played Hypnotize, and I'm just like, we're at that point now where like, I mean like that's a classic rap song. Every everyone knows mm-hmm. it. Even if you don't know it, you know it. It's one of those. But like I hear it, and I'm just like, I get it. It's iconic, but can we get like anything else in here? It, it's it yeah. like I just I've I've been I've been thinking about that on like the music supervisory tip, just like just like how just like how a song can affect the way like a scene plays out, and I just want to yeah. hear like different shit try to accomplish the same thing. It's 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 weird because once again I get it. These are these like iconic, instantly recognizable. Like it sets it sets the tone right away. But yeah. I want I, I I want I want it to get a little more challenging. You know, I like, like I want yeah, to like hit the, like the emotional like whatever like whatever is going for and like setting like the tone and this like everything with that like I would want yeah I definitely see where you coming from like I would want the shit to hit like. Like make a nigga cry or some <laughs> shit like that. Or yeah. like, you know, like um, like cause you know, you know, they be doing them little special versions of, you know, those iconic, you know, whatevers. And like, yeah, like there have been, you know, like some in some trailers, you know, that you know bring out, you know, that emotion or some shit like that. And then, you know, then there be that one track to be like, huh? Like, it, like, 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 it fits, but then, you know, emotionally, it, you know, it feels out of place, you know. And then on top of that, 
they'll do the version that's like orchestral. Like the one I always think of is like Kanye's power, right? Like there was yeah. always a period. It's like, like every single yeah. person was trying to use a Kanye song in a movie trailer. And then they do oh like, they just, they, they just, they just, they just try to like, they just add like some strings or like some fucking timpani. And then it's just like, Oh, it's, Oh, oh it's made for a movie. Now it's just like, stop. Like no. it, it's, it's, it's gotta be something more than that. You know, like it'd be, it'd be cool if, like just just because it's the first thing that came to my head and it's like a real like cinematic song quote unquote to me like i want somebody to put like schoolboy q's john muir in a song in, yeah, in a movie bro. you know like just just like, just, nah, just, like have like, on some shit me, i don't know don't let me be no arrangement you know for whatever movie because <laughs> like i'll definitely everybody tell me i have a good ear especially you know with the beats and you know arranging you know yeah. arranging my shit like i can definitely see you know like because, you know, niggas don't know. Like, I used to write scripts and shit, too. So, uh -oh. like, like so I definitely, like, can see, like, well, whatever. Like, read the shit. Like, read whatever the, you know, emotion of the whatever. And I can just, like, it's, you know, like, I go off of, I would say I want to go off my ear. But, you know, like, after, you know, watching Conductor and shit, like, I realized, like, I do go off my ear, but I mainly go off my, the emotion that I feel. So whenever I do hear something, whenever I, whatever I am feeling, you know, I just have to put it two and two, you know, with, you know, with whatever song, you know, like. Right. Um, I mean, like, <laughs> especially, I mean, and then there's shit that you have to do just for the fuck of it, like, you know, how. If they do a Doom movie or a Fantastic, a Fantastic Four, then they have to, you know, cue it with the Doom for sure. Like, please, <laughs> if not come the on. Intro, if not the intro, they're going to have to do it, like, at the um, credits or something. They have to do right. that. <laughs> okay, okay. So, all right, I'm happy you brought this up. But, like, so if they were to play a Doom song in the Fantastic Four movie, what Doom song would it be? Or if you don't want to pick an individual song, what album would you want it to come from? Or, um, or, 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 sorry, one more thing. Would you want it to be like a rap doom song or an instrumental doom song? Sorry, there, there, there's a lot of options here. So <laughs> gotta narrow it down. Nah, okay. Um, let's see. Um, shoot, I will have them play for the intro. Um, we could, um, I was fucking with the all caps. Um, classic. All cast for, you know, like the Marvel, you know, the fucking intro title screen like that. Or, shoot, like either has to be him rapping over it or the instrumental at best for the beginning. And then for like the credits, um, shoot, shoot for the credits, I would say Gazillionaire. Shoot. <laughs> Either gazillionaire. Um, hold on, let me look back real quick. Absolutely, because I'm thinking about absolutely right now. Absolutely such a great song. I, I like yeah, yeah, because Born Born Like This isn't my favorite Doom album ever, but I love absolutely yeah, like I only I come back to that, you know, sometimes the time. Like it's not my favorite, but you know, mm -hmm. Boston, I hear you with that one. Yeah. Shoot, let me see. Let me see. No, don't play it. God damn it. <laughs> okay. Yes, Gazillionaire, absolutely. Light works. Those were the only songs. Still dope. That was the only songs that I was fucking with off of that one. Still dope, of course. Still dope could work. Um yeah. let's see here. Yeah, shout out to Star, by the way. She's great. Yeah, Empress Star. Like, I tapped in. <laughs> she was rocking with that flip I did her a long time ago. She been tapped in. Oh, Six Fit got to be an outro for the I'm like, um, credits. <laughs> Which Six one? Fit for show. Six oh. Fit. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, like, um, like pre credits, post credits, like mid credits, whatever. Like as soon as the movie end, like stop talking. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, like 
like the whole point of uh doom you know not even rapping on it because the beat was too great to rap on so just yeah. let the let the beat play like shut up <laughs> right <laughs> like, i i would I I would I would either want to hear I would either want to hear beef rap from food, or maybe um, man, you, you know what I want to hear I want to hear I want to hear question the song with curious from the yeah. end of Operation Doomsday that's yeah. like like this like Doom's second verse on there is one of my favorite verses of his ever, and I think hearing that or, or like not or like not even the verse but just like hearing like the beat for questions is just. I don't know. That, 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 yeah. that's, a, that, that's a special one to me, and I think it, it I think it kind of give it an air of menace. Well, I mean, I guess it depends on like the tone the movie would take, because like it's 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 like kind of silly. But then again, a lot of Doom songs are kind of silly. Like that's kind of his whole thing. But um, to me, anyway, like not like, in a bad way, but just like 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 silly is the wrong word, but like campy. You know, like yeah. it's, it's, it's it's like campy, pulpy, like '60s cartoon type shit. Yeah, um, like yeah, I, I but, get uh, what you mean. Like you, you definitely heard all the samples and the shit. I get it. Like, yeah. like with that whole thing, like if they do some like like even like the theme music around them, they have to be like something citric to that they have to do. <laughs> That'll be right. Dope. That yeah, be dope. I, I man, I hope they do because you know, like they spent all that time making those rap covers and touting their relationship with all the rappers, they better put Doom in a fucking... Oh, yeah. Like, e- 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 even, even if there's no music, they better at least... There better at least be, like, an Easter egg or, like, something. Like, you know? something. Like, just, like, give us like something. Like, a comic like, book, like, or, like, like a poster yeah. somewhere, like... Or, like, yeah, an album, like, like, something. Like, just, just... Like, it, it doesn't have to be everything. Like, as long as, as, long as it's just... It, it'd be nice. It, it'd be it'd be It'll nice. Be nice. It. Like something slick, something slick. They can do exactly. That. Yeah, no, nah, I'm 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 sure they're working on it now. We're gonna yell about it no matter what, but fuck it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, shit. But um, what's it called? Uh, let's run it all the way back with you, June. What was the first? What was the first movie experience you can remember having? It could be at the theater. It could be at your cousin house. You know, just like the first thing that comes to mind for you. As far as movies, like, as far as I can remember, bro, like, we used to be, you know, when we didn't have cable and shit, we used to check out, you know, shit from the library at the PlayStation 2, and, you know, we used to pop movies in and shit like that, and that's mainly, you know, how we, you know, started watching movies, you know, starting out, you know, like, of course, we go to theaters and shit like that, but watching movies for real, for real, we was in the crib. Um, we, um, and then as far as long as we had them shits checked out, we what we ran that shit. Um, <laughs> I remember, you know, one movie that we ran all the fucking time was Hitch, Will Smith, Eva Mendez, nigga, with that damn, <laughs> with that goddamn <laughs> allergic reaction. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Blew his whole face up in the fucking whole Walgreens face and shit. was yeah, done. Yeah. I was like, "Hey, yo, we watched that movie so many times, bro." Like, <laughs> like, 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 fucking um, Kevin. What the Kevin James? Kevin James. Name? Yeah, I yeah, almost Kevin called him James Kevin Smith. He's not Kevin Smith. Shit is ingrained in my head, bro. Right, the little dance they do, where he's like, and, then, and then Will Smith, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Vulgan and shit. Yeah, <laughs> it just, you know, it just brought, you know, like a whole lot of, you know, like experience, you know, watching shit. I mean, um, oh yeah, not even just DVDs. Um, when I was at my granny house, we used to she had the VHS, Soul Food, mm-hmm. Friday, and all that shit, like mainly black movies and shit like that. And the Medea right. movies. Yeah. The Medea plays on VHS and shit like that, or DVDs yeah. and shit. Like it, it don't, she had a DVD and a VHS, so it didn't really matter. Yeah, but yeah. you know, being in the crib watching those movies, sitting around, you know, family or sitting by myself, you know, shit. That's how I, I'm damn near blind today. <laughs> Man, yeah. I, I, yeah, I feel it. I feel it. My grandma and my aunt were on the same time. I would always go over to, um, I would always go visit my grandma and her, um. And she would just have like the whole stack, and like Soul Food was definitely one of them. Like I remember the chunky, yep. 
the chunky VHS with the cover and everything. And like, yeah. I remember, I remember watching it for the first time and not like realizing just like, that's a heavy and fucked up movie, Soul Food. I watched it again recently for the yeah. first time in years. And you know, you get to the point where at the end, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, like son is, uh, son is cheating on his wife, and then they get to the party, and she just mm. completely loses it. It just, yep. it just busts out the. I was just like, I, was I, just, I, was, I, I, I was watching this shit at like, you know, like nine, ten, eleven years old, thinking like, you know, like all, all I ever remember is this thing about Big Mama. I don't remember yeah, anything like, else except Big Mama, you know. But like, <laughs> yeah, I just heavily responded to Ahmad, and you know, like following him since you know i was a kid and he was a kid and you don't realize that you know fucking uh mama joe had everybody fucked up yeah <laughs> and That's like right. to be honest like all those problems that y'all done having but you had all that money in your crib having your brother watch it secluded in his room like what like man and then they was like it, and then you having all like having your daughters, you know, do all that work. Like they talk about it on Twitter all the time. Like that's just crazy. <laughs> like everything that went down in that movie is, you know, it's like you 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 wouldn't expect that watching that as a kid. You know, right. a lot of times, you know, you just be like, oh, okay, right. And then, and then on top of that, you know, like I, like I'm sure you watch the Boondocks a lot too, but yeah. like I remember, I remember, um, um, it was the episode where um, Granddad makes the soul food restaurant, and then Huey mm -hmm. just like does the little Cliff Notes ex explanation for fucking soul food, and all he talks about, the only things he talks about are the Sunday dinners, mm -hmm. and Big Mama losing her. Okay, see, this is gonna fuck me up. Did she lose her leg or her arm? I never remember which one it is. It's I know it's an arm or a leg. It's no, she loses remember. both her legs. Okay, she loses both her legs. Okay, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it, it is funny because it's that episode of the show that fucked up my recollection of what happens because uh, Huey because like Huey thinks it's her arm and then he's like, oh, it's her leg. He says it's one leg, but you're right. She loses I both, both her legs. legs. Right, I right. Remember, so, um, yeah, I remember it vividly. Old boy came in, thought you know she was good, and then uh, he came in. There was like two little legs, and then they covered it up, and then they rushed him out the room. Yeah, right. The little boys in there and shit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my yeah. He he looked in to see, and then, then he saw them, you know, cover up her legs with little stubs. I was just like, damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I was to see as a kid, bro. Yeah, that shit is so raw, like literally and figuratively raw. Like, you know, like they had they had my man mm -hmm. fucked up, bro. He had to do all that shit to get everybody together because he just wanted, you know, his family happy again, bro. That's fucked up. Yeah, to put to put all that on a child, like to to put all of that on it, like that's the that's another thing that really stuck out to me on my second rewatch is like that mm -hmm. kid really had to save his whole family. On some shit. He really put you it know, up on like, his shoulders. He, he he was he was he was the he was he was there he was there like there were times where it almost felt like he was like a support dog and it's like that's a child, bro. Like what are you yeah. talking about right now? <laughs> like, bro. What a fucked up movie. But shout shout out to Soul Food. It's a classic. It's 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 a classic. <laughs> oh shit! Like, it's heavy, bro. but it's a classic. Damn. Um. <laughs> before um um before my brain gets too far off track so as you so as you grow up and start to have more experiences and start to build your own taste um you know like was there a movie you saw that really or, or like can you remember the first movie you saw that really hit you on some like emotional artistic or spiritual shit just like the first capital m movie you saw where you were like oh. this is a movie like you know um shit bro a movie that i watched you know that really like like okay like when i first like felt some like emotional type you know shit back re-watching it again probably like once i got more older watching boys in the hood higher learning mm. um menace to society especially it's just like jada really had this little ass nigga fucking doing all this fucking stepdad shit and all this like bro like could have like 
there's a whole lot of fuck, bro. Because, like, a whole lot of movies from the 90s, a whole lot of, you know, the black great, you know, movies there, like, that's what I was mainly, you know, watching and shit like that. And then, yeah, fucking, um, it's just, shoot, bro, it's just like, Friday, Friday, definitely, um, it just, you know, it was a fun movie for me. It definitely, whenever I watch that, you know, like, I forget about, you know, the fuck shit, you know, like, I'm laughing, you know, like, it's one of those movies to where, you know, like, it's like, you know, it's a comfort movie, but it's just like, niggas just, you know, chilling, and, you know, it's just, you learn, like, you anything can fucking happen, and, you know, like, that's, you know, like, it stuck with me, you know, the most, you know, like, people have all these personalities and all this other shit, and, you know, you can go through the same shit like everybody else. If you like, like it's, it's a whole lot, like a whole lot of movies have been watched from what I recall. And like, I know recently, you know, I haven't, like, I haven't been tapped in with movies as much, you know, since, you know, COVID for real, only keep up with, you know, some here and there. And then like, we've been binge watching some shows. Like we just started binge watching Grey's Anatomy and shit. Like, hey, um, my partner just did that earlier this year too on some shit. Yeah. Like, ben Watt, well, Ben Watt, we've been watched, we've been watched it in 2020, but the wife started been watching it again. We've been watched private practice too. And this oh, is <laughs> that shows a trip. I still haven't finished. I'm on season four right now. Like shows like that, and like, you know, I'm into the sci-fi suspense, you know. Black Mirror. That tracks. Oh, yeah. Black, the Black Mirror episodes, like, some of them definitely stuck out, like, stuck out, you know, like, I had a lot of opinions about, especially um, before, you know, season five or the recent season that had, you know, Anthony Mackie and old boy doing that thing. Like, <laughs> I, I, that's that, that, and it's crazy because that and San Juno Parano are my two favorite Black Mirror episodes. I love, I love the Strike Your Viper shit. I think it's amazing. Nah, I fucked with the I episode. It was... <laughs> I fucked with that episode. It's just, you know, like, oh, I, I, get like it. I, get it. I wasn't that tapped into that season, like, as I was, you know, <laughs> when I first started watching them, you know, yeah. and then the whole Bandersnatch thing, that was crazy. I still, you know, mm-hmm. Trying to wrap my head around that. But um no, like I definitely have, you know, emotional ties to some movies, but you know, like like I'm like I'm okay fried at the moment. So I just, you know, as far as I can remember, you know, yeah, those yeah, ones yeah. like Friday and everything else, like right now, like right. I have me respond with those type of movies, you know, like like um Real life, taste of life, you know, like, I don't like, you know, like, of course it's, you know, cool to get into the fantasy, you know, of everything. And, you know, like, I know, especially I'm in, into, like, a, like I said, sci-fi shit. Um, what the fuck is the la- latest, like, oh, okay, okay. One thing, one movie that did, you know, had me thinking about shit different was that Lucy movie. With, uh, what's in there? Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett. Yeah, that's a wild. That movie. whole that whole shit, bro, just kind of fucked me up. Like, because if that actually could happen to somebody, and a human can become a like this high level of consciousness to where they can enter technology like that, and then you know, you know, ultimately the whole world or whatever. Like, what the fuck could you do with that information? Like, right. And then the whole, the whole, everything that transpired in that film and what she had to go through in that shit, it was just like, damn. She just went out, like, like went out, turned it into a computer, basically. <laughs> and then, like, and then it's crazy because it's crazy because that movie's also like super duper fantastical and like kind of. Yeah. Like, like the guy who made it, Luke Besson, is the guy who made the Fifth Element. I don't know if you've ever seen the Fifth Element before. I haven't. I have not watched that movie, and I have to. Like, I I, I know Chris Tucker have been that joint. You know Bruce Willis yeah. and them. But as far as me actually watching it, I have not tapped into it. So yeah. I, I definitely got to get back into that one. 
at some point do that because it's really good. But yeah, I think uh, you know, um, yeah, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy was a wild movie in that regard. It's it's a uh, like from what I remember, it definitely tried to kind of straddle between just like being super duper out there, sci-fi, mm -hmm. fantastical, like colorful fireworks display, and like trying to keep it somewhat like realistic feels like the wrong word to use for a movie like this mm -hmm. but it wasn't you know, they it, tried it, to... it's like yeah. it's not it's realistic but at the same time you know it's out there like you never ex like you don't expect shit like this to happen but you know it's like you never know it can it could be a possibility you never know like the shit that people got going on out there or whatever but like Fucked up shit like that can happen. It's just like not to that, you know, nature, not to, right. you know, get mixed in, get some liquid mixed in your system that make you ultra fucking smart and turn you into them a computer or whatever. But shit like that can happen, you know, like human trafficking or whatever, like shit like that can happen, like in that in that sense, but like being all this other shit, all the other stuff, yeah, I can see how that's out there or whatever. Like, right. you never know. Yeah, I'm happy, uh, you know, I think about, I think about, and and, um, um, and like to go back to, or, or rather what was I going to say? So like that to me is like, I'd consider that to be something like magical realism, you know, in the mm -hmm. sense that, in the sense that like Atlanta is also like a very much like a magical realist type of show and yeah. i feel like and, and like i'm happy you brought up friday earlier because i feel like i feel like the spectrum of stuff like that kind of like starts at friday which is like like you're saying like this slice of life you know like there's nothing super duper over the top about it it's just like a bunch of people just like cooling on a hot day you know yeah. it, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a you know like it's a funny slice of life type of movie and then you have something like atlanta that's like also slice of life and also very kind of like tapped into like then contemporary the then contemporary rap scene but then you have things like an invisible car that pops up or like black justin bieber you know like that type of shit and then you have like and then you have something like lucy that yeah. is like based in reality but it's got so much stuff that you know, like you could call it like speculative, like magical realism almost. It's just like this is what the future could look like, where we're like trafficking drugs that could turn you into a computer. You know, and then it, yeah. it's it's like I'm I I love I love that because like there's definitely slice of life stuff in Lucy. One of my yeah. favorite scenes in the whole movie is when she like when she first takes the drugs and then winds up killing all those guards who come after her, and then yeah. she like eats a she eats a sandwich. And then she calls her parents so she could tell that because she realized just how much they've done for her and how much they mean to her. And she just like calls them and tells them like, I love you, mom. I love you. you know, like stuff like that, where it's like, yeah. you know, like it's, it's like, that's like hella grounded. And yeah, reminds you very, of very, right. Exactly. You know, like it's, you just, you just, you, you see her becoming this like omnipotent super being and then she just has this moment where she's just like, let me call my parents. You know, like that's what that's what all the knowledge in the world will do to you. It'll make you appreciate the simple things. Like stuff like that is really ill to me. That shit is yeah. a, 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 that shit is super fire. How do you feel about um the freaking uh I don't know what they call that whole trilogy, but the um it started off with Bruce Willis, and then the second movie, uh, the second movie split, and then Glass. Oh, the oh, that. I forgot what they called all that. Did 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 they give it a name? I don't know if they gave it a name. Did they like like? I think they they did, but I can't recall it at the moment. But cause, like, cause, cause you're talking about it started with Unbreakable. Yeah, Unbreakable. Did, uh. Um, 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 and then I think it was split the uh, split joint and then glass. Uh, James Mac, right? So I, so I love Unbreakable. I think Unbreakable is great. It's one of it's one of like the three or four movies that the dude M Night Shyamalan's made that I could consider like good movies. Yeah. Um, I en I enjoyed Split a lot more than I thought I would. I wasn't really expecting to love it like that because by then I'd kind of tired out of dude. But 
Um, I like <laughs> Split. I thought I, I, <laughs> I thought I thought it was like it just kind of turned into an X Men movie, and I kind of appreciated how like it started out super dark and then just got very silly. But yeah. um, I didn't really like Glass all that much. It, yeah. it was it was fun to kind of like it was fun to think about those two things coming together and to see Bruce Willis show up at the end of Split, but. Glass didn't really do it for me. I thought it was way too long and like kind of boring, honestly. And honestly, then just like, yeah. Honestly, um, I don't know if you know of uh, Final Flicks. I basically just watched this and then explain to that shit because I was just like, I was excited for the movie. But then once I started, you know, seeing certain clips and shit, you know, like they had like the potential to, you know, do something with all those characters. But the whole concept just kept, felt kind of rushed to me. And they didn't really like, like, they didn't really let shit develop. Like, and then the whole time and the spacing of everything kind of fucked everything up to where the thing that they did to where a secret society of people that don't know, that don't want, you know, fucking, you know, people like, um, old boy's character and, um, Multiple personality, beast dude, um, McAvoy's character, I don't know. Wendell Crumb, Wendell Crumb, that's his name. Um, (laughs) I'm going to just call him Crumb because that's all I remember. But him, Crumb, and then um, Samuel L. Jackson, you know, having that, you know, intellect or whatever. It's just, bro just had, and bro just had, you know, intellect. Like, he was just a regular nigga with a fucked up disease that was super smart. That was it. Like, I just didn't see, it didn't make sense, the whole, the whole thing. Like, it was awesome, you know, the fight scenes or whatever. I think they focus more on that and more the aspect of, oh, all these characters are coming together and shit like that. They didn't really give a fuck about the story to me because it just seemed all over the place. That's why I didn't really tap in with it, you know. And then when Final Flicks, you know, did the end to explain, I was just like, yeah. I'm glad I ain't waste my money. Yeah, that yeah, no, that sounds about right. And then and then at the very end, you know, like I you know, like at the end, like after everything Bruce Willis has gone through, they just like drown him yeah. in like a puddle. I was like, damn, really? Yeah, like that's it, that like too. that, that that's it. <laughs> that pissed me off, bro. Like his head was in a they put his head in a little fucking I was just like, Yeah, I'm glad I didn't watch the movie. Cause that was a <laughs> that was a shit way to go out. Yes, and then, oh yeah, because ultimately they won the fucking Sarah Poulson's character, her group. They basically won. I was just like, yeah. what? What the fuck was the point of this story? Like, uh, and, 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 like and and like, of course, you, you're gonna have people talk like, oh yeah, like the point is that it has no, like, get that shit out of here. So. Like it was <laughs> like the ending of Split, like. When they showed um old boy in a diner, they made it seem like it was this whole big ass fucking like, oh, I'm gonna have to stop this dude type shit or this big old thing and we get glass. I mean, everyone did good in the movie as far as acting wise, but yeah. Ah uh, <laughs> oh boy, that that uh, that trilogy, but unbreakable, um I actually tapped in the split first and then I went back to Unbreakable and I was fucking with it. Like I fucked with the whole, you know, every man do all of a sudden, like this whole thing, just like, it was just like, I like unique stories, you know, like that. Like you can just be a regular person and, you know, something happens and you possibly are more than, you know, you thought you was and, like huh like yeah. grasping that and then you know him dealing with you know the shit that he was dealing with his character in his life you know the separation from his wife or whatever i don't know i re- I can't remember if they was together or they was finna split apart or trying to work shit out or some shit but i know um the son i know old boy and all that shit but like damn like it like it, it's just certain ones, bro. It's just certain movies, bro. Like, and then certain gems that you I haven't tapped into for me to go watch and be like, yeah, bro. I'm like, why did I watch this? You know, I ain't really understand it, you know, 
as a young, you know, whatever. So there has been those. There has been those. I'm just talking. <laughs> no, I feel you, man. It, it's like that's the like it's fun. You know, like it's fun to be at that point in your life where you can go back to stuff that kind of defined your childhood or your teenage years and like watch them again and just like have them be recontextualized. And like, I do that, I do that pretty often. It's funny. I did, you know, speaking of Friday, I did that uh, last year with um, Friday after next, because I had to mm-hmm. see Friday after next in a, in a, in a hot ass minute. And it's like, how do I put this? It's not good, but I love watching it. It's a funny movie. I really enjoy myself watching it. But like this is it's funny like as hell to watch when you high as hell to be honest. Yeah, I'm bro. sure it is. <laughs> like, like the whole like, oh my god, pardon my daughter, but the whole that whole movie is first off, how did we get from Rancho Cucamonga to here? Then how the hell did Uncle Elroy all of a sudden is around that area now all of a sudden? Like, it's not like the house burned down. It's not like y'all fucking... Y'all had the money at the end of the movie, so why is he here with Uncle Willie doing this shit in fucking Crenshaw? Like, why is everyone doing what the fuck they was doing? Like, what happened to fucking Smokey, bro? Like, <laughs> we all know he went to rehab, but what really happened to bro? When did Damon come in the fucking picture for everyone? Like, that just... Like, they just fucking, like, I think, like, after fucking, I think some writers left or whatever, the movie, Ice Cube just, you know, wanted to just put this shit out, and he was just like, like, here, like, let, let's do it. Like, let's do something. Because, like, no. That's why I feel like, that's why I feel like, then Friday after the next, um, it did not release in theaters, right? No, I totally did. It did. I remember the tra- I remember the trailer and shit. Yeah, I never saw it in theaters, but it definitely did. Shit, bro. Like, I, like there was nothing like that. Like, it was it was a lackluster of the three, but it That's definitely right. has its moments. It just it was like I think Ice Cube was just all about bringing in wacky characters, all these wacky side characters, and it's just kind of like I think everyone has that same, you know. Thing, like the essence of from the first Friday movie kind of just got like you know like it went from slice of life to jumble fuck to be yeah, honest like really exactly. just like focusing on the hippie you know lap like he was just focusing on the smokers like basically like niggas smoking and shit like fucking um like they were again like trying to follow like have baked in an example like with this shit and like nah like comparing this to that movie like nah like they have they didn't do what they said was gonna do with this one. yeah agreed it, it's it's yeah like friday became an institution and they just wanted to turn it into a thing that didn't really need to expand the way it did and the thing is like the the, the thing that makes friday the original friday so great is that like you know like it does feel lived in like mm-hmm. there's a you know, you could like it feels so lived in to the point where, like, while you you know you could be watching like Craig and Smokey do their thing, or watching Debo do his thing, or watch, or, or watching Pops do his thing, but you're mm-hmm. always thinking about like what Miss Parker's up to, like what Stanley's up to, you know, like you know, like you like you know, like you can see that whole neighborhood in your mind's eye while everything else is happening, mm-hmm. and next Friday and Friday after next don't have that. Next Friday um, and Friday after next are just like you know your standard run of the mill like hood comedy, which like those are fine, obviously, but like the but like the first Friday is so special because it feels so re- like I hate to say it yeah. like this, but it feels real, you know, like it really yeah. does feel like this is like a a thriving ecosystem of a neighborhood where like things are happening, and fr- next, next Friday, Friday and Friday after next feel like movies. Yeah, you know, like that's Friday, the difference. You I know, like, they were trying to. I'm sorry, they were no, trying to. Uh, no, they were trying to capture that aspect a bit, you know, with. But it's like y'all barely stayed on them characters, and it's just like the whole um miss uh the the lady from across the street, and then the Joker brothers, and then they didn't really develop that neighborhood per se for you know for us to fucking care for it. So. Yeah. 
like that's when you know like shit started going downhill like as far as you know like yeah like you said the essence of everything like it was cool introducing day day you know like day day what well, day day kind of saved for next friday if we're really being honest uh-huh he, uh, like he low-key kind of almost like i don't he kind of tried to you know keep friday after next up like he like he was the best part of both movies to me so yeah no so, <laughs> Sunset, I'm trying to see what that be like. I th- I, I think I, I, I think about that all the time. <laughs> I think about like, that shit all like, the time, nah, bro. bro. Like Mike single handedly carried those two movies on his back, and he know it too. Like man, look, like that was the only good thing to me about those two films was Mike Epps. Yeah. But you know, like other than that, like. Like it's just really, uh, it's just really sad to see, you know, like, like how you know people can take one good idea and then you know they want to try to figure out what else they could do to it, but you know if if it can't be done, then I would leave it. You know, like it would be nice, you know, to have some like a part two or part three, you know, but. You have to, you know, maintain a formula in some capacity. And I feel like with the Friday movies, you know, after um, some writers left, and I think F. Gary didn't want to do other movies or whatever. I don't know. I heard one thing or the other, you know, over the years. But, you know, like, if they just kept, you know, the same team around, you know, like, even with a bigger budget, you know, try to get more shit done or whatever. I feel like, you know, it could have been, you know, a more funnier and a more successful, you know, trilogy per se, so that niggas wouldn't want, you know, another Friday movie to, you know, fucking uh, to redeem themselves or whatever. I feel like that's never going to happen. Like they keep, they had that, you know, in development hell for who knows how long. So I don't have no good faith that a fourth Friday movie will ever fucking. <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah, easy. like. Sorry. Go, yeah, go ahead, bro. Like, I was I was I was I was just gonna say it's detox, man. That's it's it's never gonna happen. Yeah, detox. Like, oh my god, bro. It's, it's it's never gonna happen. And that's fine. Yeah, that just hit me that detox shit, bro. How fucking long? Like it it's been like at Damn. least 20 years at this point. Something like when that. When did Kendrick drop fucking when did Kendrick drop that detox shit, bro? <laughs> that was oh, like man. Like that was over that was over a decade ago. That's I was crazy. about to say, like it's been at least 10, 11 years. Yeah. That's over a decade, man. Damn. Yeah. yeah. That's that's, plus, that's where we're at with it, bro. Yeah, plus he got other shit to worry about. He he definitely got other shit to worry about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, big time. yeah, fucking fuck yeah, nah. Dre, yeah, you know, Dre Dre's got other stuff to worry about other than music for now. Yeah. Him and him and him and Jimmy. But that's Ivy. crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, right. It it, it really really is wild. Um, I, I, that's why I, I can't get I can't get like that, yo. Like I definitely I know for sure. You know I know this steps away from the realm of you know movies and shit like that. But the whole you know like this um waiting to drop. You know like. And then you know the Andre 3000 shit, like it's just crazy. Like the whole you know standpoint, you know, with all that shit is as far as time. Like it can never be too much time with you know some people. You definitely have shit to talk about, and you know you definitely could put out the music or whatever. But you know I get you know where he was coming from with that you know in that aspect. But I don't know you know to each his own you know as far as like, I know like. If I'm like you know in my forties or whatever, I'm still gonna be rapping for sure. But like, yeah, it's just, and then I'm not gonna take too long to put out a release either. You know, like, uh, like you never know, bro. Right? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Andre's a unique situation because I know he's been talking, he's he's been talking about this pretty much ever since like Outcast is at its peak. He's all he he he's he's always kind of felt weird about rappers getting older and like he kind of seems to have started to 
he seems to have started to have a different relationship with it. Like I think around like a Quemini time, even, you know, mm-hmm. like around like Stankonia time, he would like do interviews where he would be saying similar shit and like, yeah, like to each their own. But at the same time, like, it's crazy to think that like, I mean, like ev- everyone's different. Like some people just aren't gonna, their brain and their hearts just not going to be in it like that from like an album yeah. standpoint anymore but but just like you know like my whole problem was the idea that would push someone to say oh i have nothing to talk about at 48 you know like he can he can he he, he can do whatever he wants he's a grown up it's whatever but yeah. like i'm you know, like we're still at the point where we're grappling with rappers who are like in their 40s and their 50s like 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 yeah. i was just reading i was i was reading this um this gq piece on e40 e40 is about to be 60 years old soon yeah you know like he's That's he's and, and, and like he still drops like pretty crazily you know like the, yeah, there's people crazy. who still you, you know like he, he dropped he be coming through too with like five six joints a year bro it's crazy you know like er, once again everyone's different and especially within like our you know, like our subset of this shit. Like, there's plenty of people in their 40s and 50s who are rapping better than they have ever. You know, and about yeah, interesting, man. about interesting stuff. But it, it, like, to me, I'm just interested in the idea of I'm interested in the idea that would push someone to openly admit that they have nothing left to rap about at 48 years old. You know, I think I I think about that a lot, and uh, I just I hope we get past the point. Or no, I hope we get to a point where less people feel that way. Like yeah. Andre can do whatever he wants. I'm here to say that I'm not trying to force anything on him. Yeah. But I want less and less people to feel that way when they're 48 years old. Yeah. You know, like if 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 like if fucking like Bruce Springsteen and Bob Dylan can be making music into their 70s, 80s, and 90s, like we could do the same. yeah, we could exactly. Do and, and you know, like. Not, not even, not even to go off on the, not, not even to go off on the whole rock comparison thing. Yeah, like just in general, just like, like, like still it, it, being in right. there, you know, like, right, like appreciating, you know, appreciating, you know, the art form in which you know you became, you know, who you are, and like I saw some shit to where he was like. He didn't really want to, you know, celebrate, you know, fifty years of hip hop and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that yesterday like, too. I'm just like. I get where you're coming from, but you know, you have like it's you know, you are a part of a legacy and you know, you have to honor that in some way, shape, or form. Like, I believe, like, you know, this is me being an MC. Like, you have to honor that. Like, this is what you decided to, you know, speak out, you know, all your shit, the AT aliens, the Sangonias, the freaking, you know, love, fucking the love below, all that shit. Like this is, you know, this is, you know, how we came to know you. This is how, you know, you know, all and everything. Like, this is why we give a fuck about you putting out an album and then not being a flute album, in which I do fuck with the flute album. Yeah, man. New Blue Sun like, Fire. I like it, too. Like, um, yeah, man. Like, you have to honor, you know, being a part of that legacy in some world, you know. Like, I would definitely, you know, if I, you know, was in a position to, you know, showcase, you know, my work being a part of this, then I would most definitely tap in. Like, shout out to homie Ruben Vincent, you know, seeing him, you know, on the BET shit doing his thing, you know. And shout out to Charlie too. So, like, it's definitely, you know, cool seeing, you know, kids, you know, around my age, you know, honoring the legacy that they're a part of, you know, that gave them the voice and, you know, whatever. So, you know, it is kind of, you know, saddening to hear that, you know, he doesn't, you know, want to participate in that, you know, but, you know, I have to, you know, be open to his perspective, you know, it's just like, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just a lot, you know, you, you want, you want, we expect more of our legends, but it's really nice to, uh, it's nice to see that you feel that way. And just like you said, just considering like y'all, y'all, y'all got something going on down in Charlotte, man. Like between you and, you know, like Mavi and goddamn Jamonte and the, like I can sit yeah, here and name names all day, but like it's, it's, it, you know, like it's really incredible to see what you've built. And like for you, when did, uh, like, 
when did you know, like growing up when did music become capital m music for you when did it go from being something that was like passive in the background to like you know like a thing that you really not so much like made but just like a thing that you were like clocking and like checking for and like invested in like uh okay let me think just on quick. some fan shit. like i know definitely like as soon as I started getting the knack of, you know, trying to make music. Hold on a second. Yeah. To get this. Hello. <laughs> um. Boo -boo, hey. Watch your stuff, boo boo. Ugh, shoot. Okay. So as far as that, um, shoot, like I know when, when uh, I was in sixth, seventh grade, I was in this middle school, and I got you know these laptops that they gave us, you know, that we could take home and shit, MacBooks, and you know, my mom was heavily listening to, um, my mom listened to a lot of shit. You know, especially with the CDs, you know, burnt CDs, um, you know, in the little book, you know, fucking of uh, CDs and shit. Um, and niggas, you know, like the CD man and niggas will have they uh she mainly had like fucking Master P albums, uh of course Tupac. Um she, she used to play Master P a lot. And then she used to play her um the R and B joints, Raheem Devon, and um everybody. Like, I know over time for me, once I you know, yeah, like my mom had you know the burning this not burning desire. My ass was gonna say Mike shit. My had you know had the burnt CDs and there her shit. And then around the time where I got those MacBooks and started you know loading up mixtapes and shit like that, you know like. Um, I didn't realize it at the time because I was 11 years old when I first started writing my shit, but like, I did have the knack, you know, I really would say like the first time I had me a knack for music was when, you know, I was young. Um, I was four years old. I wasn't, you know, verbal for real, not because like I couldn't really talk or whatever. It's because I didn't want to talk. I found myself mumbling, you know, the theme song the fucking fresh prince whenever that came on and then you know like my mom you know caught wind of that you know was like oh he getting it he getting it and all that shit and um definitely you know song and choir type shit like music has been a part of my you know life for a little bit but i didn't think that you know like as far as rapping and as far as you know making beats so i started making beats four years after you know i really got into you know rapping and then, like, yeah. making them shits on the computer, you know, putting out those little songs and everything. It, like, around that time as a kid in high school, you know, that really hit me. Like, listening to, you know, those joints with my mom. And then as far as me, I was the heavily listening to uh, Lil Wayne. Um, Lil Wayne fucking, uh, who else were we was listening to around that time? Mixtape. Big State Gucci Mane, yeah. fucking uh, Chief Keef, yeah, um, Kendrick, everybody, like, like, like a whole plethora of people. Like, especially you know, like when I was younger, it wasn't Kendrick. You know, like I was mainly listening to uh, whatever my mom was like. It was like I can't pinpoint you know exact artists. You know, like here and here, like because there was just Drake's. You know, there's you know the whole Young Money Squad. I was heavily yeah. into them. Like during that, you know, little time where I started making shit, like J. Yeah, Cole. Spitter was popping around that time too, yeah. What was J. Cole popping around 2011 type shit, 2012? Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Star is born. Yeah, yeah, Hove. Yeah, my mom had, you know, the blueprints, all that shit. Hove all throughout. Like, it's just, you know, a whole lot, bro. Like, I definitely had, you know, a whole lot of, you know, influences you know as far as you know that i didn't realize up until you know like i actually started putting it down and writing it and eventually producing right 
you know i'm sure and like as you're kind of taking all this stuff in and starting to make joints on your own um when did you when did you first realize that this is going to become more than just a hobby for you and that you were going to like go all in on it um like i really started taking this shit serious like sophomore year like actually becoming aware of the fact that i'm making my music and that i'm actually like whoa who's this liking my stories and shit like but um like sophomore year bro i linked up with this cat that lived across the street from me to try to you know do some shit with him but with him and that really worked out but i did you know get the drive to keep going because you know i just felt like you know the words that i had to say you know wanted to, needed to be heard and you know i'm just you know like at a point where like as far as my feelings, as far as long as my feelings, you know, are felt and, you know, like whoever rocking with, you know, what I have to say, you know, like as long as I can't put that out and, you know, people feel it, you know, I'm all, you know, complete, you know, as far as that, like, I'm just at a point to where, you know, like, yeah, you know, I could do this shit, you know like it really be something you know like a look you know at you know cats my age you know my homies and all that shit like you know like the people that you know i've had been around and you know are really doing it like like yeah i can be i can do that shit like it's it's not a it's not a problem you know it's you know just the long road ahead you know the journey yeah you know it's crazy and yeah, speaking of that, um, where, um, when did, when did I'll never die start? Because, because like IND is, you know, like y'all, you know, like y'all as a collective, as people, you know, like Jay Cinema, Elijah Quentin, Roman, DJ Noon somewhere. I could sit here and list names all day, but shout out to, I mean, like y'all have been, y'all have had motion for quite a while, but like, where did all that start? Like how far, how far into you making music did, y'all decide to start that because i saw you tweeting recently that um srs was like kind of the influence and like inspiration behind ind yeah. coming to life so like talk to me about that a bit yeah so if it wasn't for srs i wouldn't have met cinema man some rap songs by old sweatshirt for anybody listening who doesn't know but anyway yeah yeah if it wasn't for srs i definitely wouldn't have met and tapped in with cinema or definitely had tapped into that realm of, you know, like, of music, like finding that being on that site, like, before, you know, SRS, you know, I definitely had me, you know, like a little, you know, sound like I was rapping. I was more of, you know, and being influenced by, you know, like Chance the Rapper, Childish Gambino, Tyler, you know, more in that realm of fucking shit, like, you know, before all that. And then, you know, I, you know, wasn't really feeling like, you know, like, of course, you know, the music I put out, you know, was good to me, but I felt like I was still stuck in the same place and it wasn't really getting me anywhere creatively. So, and like, even though I did like the music that I was making, I didn't feel at home with it. And then like, you know, like, Mavi got, you know, put on with Sage and shit like that. And that really got me, you know, looking, you know, towards, you know, that realm, you know, of everybody and shit like that. Me getting into Mike, um, if it wasn't for, you know, like that whole, you know, situation. Like, I think I said, yeah, it was my, me, C, and Mavi, Sage, and Earl on the story. I was like, oh, shit. So I was just like, let me start getting tapped in into that realm of things and shit like that. You know, I always fucked with um, Earl and his music. Um I'm just mad that I just wasn't around, you know, when, you know, Mike and them and all of them was making that music early on. Like, I, I wish I was here for, you know, the Black Soap and, you know, May God yeah, Bless the Hustle and shit like that. You know, I came what in a, around the time, what a time. My, boy and my pen came out. So that was like my first Mike project that I ever, you know, tapped into. And, you know, that was, you know, it ever since. And then being, you know, and then when SRS dropped, you know, I definitely, you know, like it def shifted a whole lot of shit for me creatively. You know, that's when I started, you know, letting, sh you know, go of, you know, trying to stick to one way or, you know, rap one way or whatever and shit like that. And then, you know, started tapping in with more heads, you know, like around like when 
niggas was cool with a day. You know, we used to be, you know, on his lives, you know, making his beats and shit like that. I used to be tapped up in there. Then, you know, I saw Jared in there, Cinema, and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of other people, you know, I had to, you know, connect with. And then um, ever since then, you know, connecting with those people, you know, building the light and then making my music around the time, settling into that, you know, that home of a sound, you know. Um, I just, you know, particularly gotten close with Cinema, you know, like started tapping in with his music, you know, like, at first, you know, like, at first, like, I wasn't, you know, like, I wasn't so used to hearing other people's music that was coming up and hearing other people's sounds and shit like that. So I was a little bit, you know, like, with the way that Jared flows, like, I've come to appreciate, you know, his shit, you know, ever since, you know, what our first meeting, you know, because, you know, coming into it, you know, I didn't really understand, like, that's why I felt, that's why I was like, if it wasn't for SRS, I wouldn't have appreciated, you know, the way that he was rapping and all that shit. Because before then, I would have thought, bro, was trash. In my like, oh, shit. In, in my like, you know, like, in my like, I'm not saying it as a diss to him, but you know, like, I would have thought, bro, was trash and this, that, as well. Because I, it wasn't from a point to where I didn't like, because I couldn't understand it. You know, like, I do have that ignorance to where, like, you know, like not understanding certain shit, you know, make me have that mindset. But, you know, like, I had to unlearn that, you know, you feel me? So yeah. once I unlearned that and I became more appreciative and settled into that sound and it was just like, yeah, bro, let's just, you know, uh, I was just like, IND had been, you know, a concept, you know, for my personal past, you know, IND was originally – Indigo squad with some niggas in high school, but obviously, you know, we fell off at the high school and, you know, shit didn't pan out with that, but I still wanted to keep that alive. And, you know, essentially, I'll never die. You know, it's just, you know, like, I'll never die, you know, as far as, you know, like, I'm making music and I'm a person and I'm, I have an impact on people throughout my presence and my words. And even when I'm gone, my words going to still, you know, be played, still going to be carried out and still going to be referenced and remembered. And, you know, I'm still going to be remembered physically as a person. You know, I'm, you know, on the Internet, I'm on merch, I'm on paper, I'm on this, I'm on that. I'll never die. So that's, you know, where the name, you know, and everything came from. And then, you know, I was just like I wanted to, you know, build my own, you know, family of sorts of like-minded individuals and, you know, wanted to come up. So I just, you know, after me and Jared linked up for the Mavi, um, the Mavi Max, and I'm I'm not going to say bro, because, uh, you know, well, they not, you know, um, shit. <laughs> I'm going to just say bro who used to be cool with Mike, you know, that yeah. show back in uh, I, 2020. Oh, you were at that um, show? That's crazy. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking. Yeah, uh, uh, I was at that show too. I know who you're talking about. We don't gotta dwell on it, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly who you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, at that show, like that was my first time me and Cinema linked up in person, and then um we got a like yeah, we set up an Airbnb and then got kicked out the Airbnb when we was rolling up and shit, and we wasn't even gonna smoke any of bitch. But like after that, you know, like and then you know becoming more comfortable with the, the community of people I met, I asked him and Yana Montero, you know, if y'all wanted to, you know, you know, do the thing and all that, you know, rigmarole. And then when Flowers came in, you know, like during that time, like it was just a good time, bro. Like I was yeah, just trying to connect, to with, you know, huh? I just said shout out to Flowers. I'm sorry. Yeah, peace to Flowers. Yeah, peace to Flowers. Yeah, me and him, me and them. Um, me and them aren't really cool at the moment, you know, as far as, you know, us, you know, as, uh, personally, but, you know, shoot, I mean, I definitely talked about the reasons behind it, but we don't got to dip into that, but, you know, yeah. I still, you know, have love for them, you know, still have love for what they do and what they create, you know, they may not have the same feelings for me, but, you know, it's all good, you know. I have to respect, you know, their feelings, you know, in the matter or whatever. But, you know, 
since we are speaking about IND, I wanted to touch base on that, you know, because everyone, we definitely have members that aren't members anymore. You know, Schizo, Love Heart, um, Mars Kumari, Soju, shout out you know, Young Wave Sage, shout out to everybody that isn't IND no more type shit. Like, it's just like, and then, shit, bro, it's just a long, like, it's not a long story, but it's just, like, it's just connecting and staying tapped in, you know, musically. Like, I got put on through uh, Elijah Quentin on the SoundCloud mix. I thought, bro, it was a day. Hakeem rapping and shit. And I was just like, yo, like, bro, out in the Bahamas. Roman, I got tapped in through um, the brilliant Dan. Um, shout out to him. He's another guy, you know. I'm grateful for, you know, knowing and all that stuff that we don't talk no more, but it's all good. He put me on the Roman and then Roman, Roman is like the underdog for real, for real, this shit. You feel me? Like his got to get more tapped into him, especially like he definitely got the leg work. He definitely got the versatility. Like bros just important. And I, you know, like I definitely wish he got more shine. You know, I try my best to do. You know, I do I do it all for, you know, everybody <laughs> in the IND. I'm basically the manager type shit, you feel me? But that's a that's a besides the point, you know. Um Noon, uh DJ Noon somewhere, formerly known as Noon. That's my boy. Um he pulled up on me for the video shoot in Union Square for Freestyle Six and you know, do Jared and shit like that. And ever since it's just been love. Then um who else we came tapped in with? Young Wave Sage. Um, I've been new about bro for like a long time beforehand. You know, he was doing the memes and all this other shit on his, you know, whatever. But he he was fire, you know, doing his music tip. And, you know, you know, I asked him, for, you know, for a beat for uh the Affinity Files, our one and only IND project. It's been three years type shit. <laughs> He was like, you know, like, I'm down to rock with you. Like, the only way you can use my beat is if I rock with y'all type shit. And I was like, okay, cool, bro. You want to tap in? Let's tap in. And then, you know, that's like, you know, the only, you know, type of, you know, thing that, you know, he put out with IND type shit, you feel me? But it was just like, it, it was just in a moment, you know, like, I commemorate bro for his contributions. You know, he did tap in and support, you know, all of IND heavy. So I'm grateful for that, you know. Uh, who else? Like, it's a whole lot of guys. Like, Nine Lives, I met through Noon after they dropped their project. Um, fuck, what's the name of that project? Mondra Gap. I don't know if they got it up on platform still, but Mondra Gap, after they uh invited us out to, you know, do that little show, you know, I tapped in with Nine, I was fucking with his shit, you know, and then, you know, it's just like, gathering up connections and you know doing all that shit and then you know when i came down to charlotte well when i came back to charlotte you know i was trying to find you know a better footing you know with everything trying to get you know trying to develop what i had back up in nyc type shit and then you know um i uh, i'm working at i'm working at a mall type shit doing security i see this nigga prince shakir you know, he was working, uh, he was a manager at goddamn Auntie Yans and shit in that bitch. And, you know, we just connected and talked and uh, chopped it up, you know, like it was, it, it was important, you know, for, you know, us to connect type shit. Cause you know, he an NC dude, I'm an NC cat. And, you know, like we just, you know, we respected one another. We ain't talk about, you know, us combining forces yet. We were just, you know, starting that camaraderie. And like with Jay Nobby, you know, I've done a feat. Like I had him on, you know, up on my Simple Volume 2 project back in 2019, 2018, 2019, around that time. Um, tapped in with him with that. And then, you know, he's been rocking with my music, you know, ever since then. And, you know, when he moved to Charlotte with Prince, you know, we just started to connect more. We met in person. Uh, no, I actually met him in person for something i don't for some some shit i believe um i know i met him before you know i had him pull up on my show um in 2021 for him to perform in. but um 
Yeah, bro. It's just like connections upon connections. And then, you know, I knew this guy, Miles, he go crazy. You know, I've been seeing him tapped in, you know, check the rhyme. Shout out, check the rhyme. I've been, I tapped, I got tapped in with him through his platform. And then once I saw bro was from Charlotte, you know, I was like, hey, yo, bro, you from Charlotte, I'm from Charlotte. We, we trying to, you know, make shit win. You know, it was more, you know, like it was more fulfilling for me to have, you know, more of IND, you know, here with me, you know, so that I could, you know, build up a better camaraderie and get that energy that I had up in NYC back. So, you know, like when we all, you know, you know, combine forces, because we all over, you know, like um, EQ, he in Bahamas, Roman out in Kentucky and shit, um, then everybody in New York and then everybody here. It's just, you know, like, uh, like an amalgam of, you know, niggas that really could do it. And, like, I feel like I can, you know, propel ourselves, you know, to, a, you know, to where everybody talking, you know, like, to have that same influence that Slums had, you know, you feel me? Like, that's my main inspiration, you know, my main, you know, like, when it comes to, you know, me trying to form and connect with people. Like, I want to, you know, do things like, you know, not necessarily like copy, like what Mike be doing, but like the energy that might, you know, exude and, you know, like from the times that I met him and all that shit, I want to, I want to have that energy with, you know, the niggas that I'm around and the people right. that I'm working with closely and shit like that. So that was my main takeaway and trying to, you know, form, you know, and maintain, you know, I and D as a whole. And yeah, bro, like all of us are important for sure. Yeah. No, like that whole, that whole sense of camaraderie and community is what pushes you know, like not to not to not to like trivialize it by saying it gives it a story, but you know, like people have a people have an easier time connecting with stuff that they can like relate to or at least like see see the relationship in the center of if that makes sense, you know. And like I think that y'all have, I think that I think that IND is really built something, you know, like in that in that respect for a lot of people. You know, it's 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 really cool to hear that you know like we're we're you know like we're at a point now where like Mike and Slums and them have you know, like have like sons and like progeny and like a lineage that you can kind of like draw out and make connections between and you know you're definitely within that lineage and it's extra dope to see and it's not just like you said you're not copying nobody but you know like nobody nobody but you could be making these like flips happen the way you do because that was be, be, you, because because like a lot of those are um like just just like seeing the reach that you've been able to build with those and just like the creativity behind them and you just kind of hopping right on top of a uh, you know it's like you, you just like hopping on like the latest shit as soon as you possibly can like you know like Glorilla mixes and Ice Spice mixes and Rome Streets mixes and just you know like all these all these like all these different ones that I see you doing it's just like really it's just really beautiful to see it expand the way it's expanded so um two so this is a two part question what was the first one of those you ever did and how does it feel I mean, like, I know things aren't necessarily the best right now, but how does it feel to kind of have people's ear with that and be moving around musically the way you do? Shit. Well, <laughs> shit, I'm sorry. Um, no, you're good. I know the first, the first one that I, like, I got, uh, Cause I started to get into the mode of trying to put out, you know, beats or whatever. And then, you know, I was just like, okay, let's, you know, start doing the flip thing. And then the first thing I think I ever freaking really, I think I ever really did was the first time I flipped um, Dangerous Derringer and Sauce Walker and shit. I think mm, that was okay. my first. No, 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 no. Um, I flipped a Zeke, Zeke Ultra joint. Um, The one, the, the joint that he did. Fuck, I forgot the name of that shit. Um, it was one of his newest joints that he dropped um earlier that year. Um, the video he was um the video he was in front of it, it was a silhouette, he was in front of the sun dancing and some shit like that. Um what the fuck is the name of that song? 
She said, "Let us sign up." Like, like, shout out Zeke Ultra, bro. Yeah, for real. Like, that's yeah. my guy right there, for certain. We definitely got more work coming too. I'm just like, I'm just got to get there with him. <laughs> okay, what was it? Okay, Braves hat, Braves hat. When I flipped Braves hat, that was my very first little one, you know. Got sampled from that Ezra Skies dude on TikTok and shit, and then just started, you know, doing shit. And then, um, when you know, I did the Sauce Walker, you know, that's when you know. Like he retweeted it on Twitter or some shit like that. And then I was just like, okay, you know, let's get some started with this. And then, you know, eventually I did the Uzi joint. And then eventually, you know, did the Ice Spice shit. And then when I did the Ice Spice shit, I was just like, I didn't, I didn't even think none of it when I posted it on Twitter and shit. And then boom, like the fuck, all that shit came out of that. I was just like, wow. Like that's when I was like, okay. We getting somewhere with this, and then you know, I just you know, I just kept going. I didn't you know think anything of it. I was just you know wanted to try to push it out, you know, to get you know me ahead, you know, during you know the first initial shits with it, and then you know like um it definitely like it's crazy because you know because if it wasn't for the flip, CJ Fly wouldn't be on my album. If it wasn't for the flips, like, I wouldn't have gotten, you know, as much, you know, as people tapping in, you know, when they do tap in type shit. Like, I got, you know, people hitting me up for beats right now. Um, A certain individual that just dropped an album with a kid named uh, Too Rich just hit me for beats. So, Uh maybe something coming out with that. But, um, like, it definitely... um, gotten a lot of eyes on me, gotten a lot of ears, you know, like, I remember I tried to, you know, use the momentum from, you know, the Uzi flip to, you know, like, I tried to um, upload the flip on SoundCloud and I added a song off of the Endless Tape, the Everyman Endless Tape that niggas was trashing that. I was just like, damn. But then I had to realize, like, I had Uzi fans coming on my shit and doing all that and then they hear this and then, of course, they won't call it trash because it's something they don't understand. So it's just Man. like, it's just like, um, just like, it just, it's like, it be hits and misses, you know, as far as, you know, getting people talking and shit like that for sure. But, you know, I just keep going. Like, I, like, people keep telling me that, you know, like, my resilience is like crazy. Cause like, I just, you know, just like, there be times to where like I feel, you know, like creatively burnt out. Or I think I'm burnt the fuck out. But like something comes out of something or whatever. And then I'll be surprising myself at times. Like I did like I did not think that the Uzi flip would go as crazy as it did. And then I didn't think the RXK joint, the too many. I was about to say, yeah, the nephew one. Yeah. (laughs) I didn't think that then that whole controversy with that with bro uploading my shit and like Niggas had to get RXK and the managers involved in helping in that shit took the fuck down. And then, you know, and then, like, I think they letting it slide, you know, as far as because I put his name on it when I fucking dropped it on streams. So, um, it ain't no problems with that. So, I'm grateful, you know, for them for that, you know, because, like, I ain't expect all this. Like, the shit, the shit hit 1.2 on SoundCloud and it's almost 1 million on streams. Yeah, it's almost a million on Spotify. Like, listening to it. like, seeing like, like the whole like, it, it was just crazy seeing niggas using my shit in memes and then using the shit, you know, like all over TikTok. Like people keep telling me like, oh, like yeah. the TikTok shit. Like I like, like, like I just saw your shit on a video. Like it's so surreal. Like seeing your shit being on other people's shit. Like it's it. Like I didn't think that. And then people are still liking it and still using it to this day. It's almost going to be a year since I dropped that bitch and I'm just like I want to you know be able to use that you know and like get someplace with it it's just you know like I have to use that and then tackle life as I am you know right now and it's really you know it's a challenge but you know 
I got no choice but to be, but to be up to it, you know, because I got kids to feed, you know, I got shit I got to do. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. life, 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 life fucking me raw right now, for real. So I just got to, you know, I just got to keep going at it, you know? <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, this, this, this is this is this is the life we chose and you know, yep. you're making it work for you. You're making it work for you the best you can and you know, I think uh considering all of that, like, you know, having what a life come out around this time is uh I mean, just to have something with that title come out is, you know, like you know, like a little a little bit uh ironic just considering yeah, how, what a, how, how you know, like how much of a roller coaster it's been for you. What you a know? life for so, sure, man. Like, you know, like Miles, Miles had me, you know, like Miles asked me before he got on the album, I was like, what is this album? And, you know, what is, you know, like this whole thing? And it's like, it's not just a follow up to Smiles of the Sun, you know, like, because I am going to do like a little, I'm on my alchemist shit with this shit. Like, if niggas ain't got that already, but like, just looking back, bro, like I've definitely been through my fair share of shit, you know. And it's been a whole lot. And I realized, like, you know, like, me wanting help from other people and all that shit and me being frustrated that, you know, some people that could help don't want to help, you know, but some people that I would expect to help can't help because, you know, like, they got their own shit going on and, you know, like, everybody going through it and thugging it out here and shit. And I get that, you know, but I can't, you know, like, it's not like I can't, it's not like I can't shut off that emotion of frustration, like, down, you know, niggas can't help me, but, you know, that's besides, you know, the point, like, there's, you know, a whole lot of pitfalls, trials and tribulations, and then there's a whole lot of good shit, you know, like, looking back, there's a whole lot of good shit that, you know, I never would have thought, you know, that I would be on, you know, today, you know, especially before, you know, COVID and all this other shit, like, I definitely went through our fair share of shit, still going through it, you know, we just got to hope for the best and, you know, just, you know, you at any point in time, if you live the long enough, you know, life to, you know, be like, damn, we really at this point. And then you can still like, you can still keep doing it like at different points in your life to look back and look like what a life so far. And like just hearing, you know, these artists all over my beats, you know, all over this piece, you know, just you know building and connecting and building those bonds you know it's just it's been more important to me than ever you know during this time so that's you know why you know like the emphasis on you know fucking me doing this thumbs up to the sun is you know we 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 we, we straight you know for now we good we we making it we making it work we doing a good job in this life right. so like that's my main thing with that, you know, like trying to, you know, keep my head high and wishing for the best, hoping for the best, you know, like I still got to figure out how we're going to pay this room today. So I'm just still trying to, you know, keep that positivity going no matter what. I can't keep, you know, like learning the lessons that I'm learning and still being stuck, you know, and all this shit. Like I got to make some move. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tiring. I can, I can, I can, I can imagine it's really tiring, but the fact that you're still here and that you're like willing to do whatever you need to do for your family and just to like keep your soul nourished is, you know, like it's, 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 it's admirable. It's, it's really admirable. And before, before, before we formally wrap this up, um, how can people help? Like just, 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 just like whatever, whatever whatever shit you got to broadcast like just tell people how they can tap in with you just yeah yeah bro just you know i do got the band camp you know content up and running you know i do i am doing features i am you know doing beats you know of course you know price going up after the 31st um def can write you write you you know good little email to send out to publications you know Talk about your little project all nice and fancy tight. And I definitely gonna can mix and master, you know, just hit me up on my Instagram, June 8th, J-U-N-E-A-Y-T-H. 
you know, then, you know, all the necessary, you know, cash apps and shit, you know, just hit me up on Instagram and I'll let you know all that, you know, what I, mean? you know I don't want to, you know, put that all out there, you know, for you to write down or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> but like, just definitely just support, you know, just boost the post if you can't, don't have any, you know, things spare, you know, or if you're not necessarily looking for services, you're more than welcome to tap in and donate or whatever. It's, you know, it's whatever, you know, just hit me up and, you know, we can definitely, you know, say, uh, get that going. I can't talk for oh. shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good, son. I'm I'm just, you know, like, I'm just, uh, um, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know, I know, I know, I know things have been really tough and obviously I'm not trying to like waste or trivialize your time, uh, effort, but it, it's, it's, it, it means, it means a lot that you came here for this. And, you know, like, you know, like stuff like this can feel kind of, you know, like trivial when the world, you know, like whether like your personal world or like everything on planet Earth is falling apart. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this type of community building that you've been involved in with all these people and your music and everything you do is like, this is the type of shit that keeps people nourished and it keeps people sane. You know, like it, it's like this shit is grounding and like the, you know, like, you know, like music, like, like all, all the arts in general, but music specifically is something that really, you know, sticks with people. So, um, you know, just I appreciate you doing what you do and you coming here to share some of that with us. So thank you. You know, uh, bro, I'm definitely grateful, you know, for you, you know, asking me to be here and tapping in and shit, bro. Like, I definitely wanted to do this, so, you know, I'm all more for it. Not my shit being at 1%, bro. <laughs> real quick, real quick before you go, last question. If your life was a movie, June, what would it be about? If it was a movie, it would just be about a nigga just trying to get through life, smoking and having fun and just trying to be, you know, the best that they can be. And despite adversity and despite all this bullshit being thrown at them, you know, it's all about pushing and they can succeed, you know, to the end type shit. You feel me? It's, yeah. it's just every man shit, you know. Heard that. And yeah, no, nah, we're grateful that you're here and we're grateful that you're pushing and we're, you know, like tap it, tap it, tap in with my mans. He's been going crazy. Um, help, help, help however you can. And just uh, keep an eye out for all the cool shit. He's got cool shit. They got cool shit coming. So, you know, just uh, stay, yeah, stay tapped in. <laughs> Peace and love to you, bro. I appreciate you asking me to be here, man. Thanks for listening. Shout out to y'all for making it this far. And shout out to all the black people listening, too, because y'all really impeccable. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and tell a friend to come through next time. One.